and as you teach us, oh gracious God, and help us to be able to learn of the next realm where you're going to take us. Lord, we want to thank you for it because we know that in our hearts, oh gracious God, we love you, Lord, and we truly want to do your will. So help us, oh gracious God, strengthen us, fill us full of you that we may be able, oh gracious God, to spread your word. And so gracious God, we pray now as you teach us by your spirit that we will be able, oh gracious God, to digest every word so that we can do it, oh God, in this time that many, oh gracious God, may hear and be saved. We pray for those that are here. We pray for those that are on the way. And we ask, oh gracious God, that all will be blessed this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. If you all agree, say amen. Praise the Lord. We want to uh, now go uh, back to the verse that we left off. Uh, and that was 826 of Romans. That's Romans 8, 26. And um, we want to be able to look at it again. Um, we talked about it the last time we were here. But um, as like today, it was a, a, a little less than what we usually have. But we enjoyed it because we found out we had help from the Lord. And what does the book of Psalms say? Our help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Lord, hallelujah, amen. And when you, when you, when you hear that and when you see that, you begin to realize, you know, heaven's help is with us, amen? And so as we look at Romans 8, uh, 26, we find out much about how he works with us. Amen? So let us read it again, and then we will uh, begin to uh, go through some of it uh, so that we'll get to uh, 27 as well today. Amen? And what does it say? Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That means uttered by us. Amen? All right. So, it said the spirit itself, and what should you think it be? Himself. Amen. Uh, because God is spirit. Uh, King James said God is a spirit. But we want you to know uh, <laughs> that God is spirit. Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> so as we... Uh, Look at this. Um, we want to be able to uh, talk about it that we would digest how he helps us <clears throat> because he helps, uh, it says, uh, our in, in, infirmities, which means our what? Our weaknesses. Now, uh, I am kind of sorry that we have that dilemma, but God didn't make you to be on your own. Oh. Thank you, Pastor Hodge, for, for saying something, because <laughs> y'all got to help me, please, somebody. Uh, uh, yeah, he wants us because 
It says, give us this day when he taught us to pray. Give us this day our what? Our daily bread or necessary portion as it really means in the Hebrew. So what, what we are really getting at is that every day he wants us to come to him. There's no day that we ought not to be going to him. Amen? This is, this is very important uh, because sometimes we get to the point, you know, we feel like we're grown. Oh, y'all ain't, you, you're not with me. Amen? But we got to realize that we are only grown in him. <clears throat> Amen? That's where our growth is. So, uh, Danny, would you uh, uh, start there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you must use the mic. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Roman, Romans chapter 8. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Solving the defeat of chapter 7 brings into focus the provision of victory. Uh -huh. Number one, a new law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Chapter 8, verse 2. <laughs> and chapter 2, a new power to replace the weakness of the flesh. Okay. Now, there right there is, is a lot for us to be able to see because chapter 7 talks about uh, especially Paul when he was in his weakness where, uh, that, and he was trying to teach us that we had help. So in chapter 8, it really switches when he has the, the help. Amen. So <clears throat> it helps us to see that he was sort of like failing uh, when um, in chapter 7, but in chapter 8, he began to uh, come alive. Amen. Amen? Amen? Because he began to be awakened by the Spirit. And by the way, Spirit up here is with a capital S. Amen. And so we know what that means. It's talking about God's God, Spirit. spirit yeah. Amen? Amen. So uh, <clears throat> we have to uh, also see <clears throat> here that it is saying that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and that's 8 uh, 2 so you have to go back to 8 2 <clears throat> to see exactly what that is talking about but, uh, but then uh, in number 2 that he just read it says that a new power. Come on. What does it say? A new, new power, power to replace the weaknesses of, or the weakness of the flesh. Now, how many know in our flesh we are weak? Amen. Amen. That's right. Uh, That's right. Or should I go to a verse like say, with God we can do nothing? Without huh? me ye can do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so you need God all the time and he's spirit. Amen? All right. So, now let's go further, please. <clears throat> this new power, the Holy Spirit, fulfills the righteousness mm -hmm. of the law. Yeah. Verse 4, mm -hmm. provides power to please God. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, mm -hmm. power to live. Verse 15. Mm-hmm. And the power in prayer, uh, okay. verse 26. Okay, okay, uh, okay, verse 13 was instead of 15, but that's okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 37 tells us that God also empowers us in suffering. Oh, did you hear that? Now, we covered a lot last week, but we didn't cover a whole lot on suffering. I think we just talked about it. Folks, listen. 
in order to follow Christ, you must pick up your cross and do what? Follow him. And follow him. Believers don't want to even think about that. Huh? They don't even want to think about it. But most people who go to uh, church, as they call it, which they really are, <laughs> you know, they go to church because they want to do good and do well and fare well. But then when it comes to the point of realizing the only reason why we have this word in our possession today <coughs> is that somebody suffered, right. bled, Amen. and died Amen. for us to have this word. Yes. The principles of life in the kingdom. Absolutely. And this is something that many of us don't even understand. You talk to a believer, uh, and uh, <clears throat> they are talking about if you are not doing well, especially with the prosperity movement, if, if, if you're not driving a, 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 Bentley. a big car or something and, and looking good, real sharp, you know, uh, maybe you're not blessed. Listen, folks, they don't realize that a lot of blessings come through going through something. And this is the reason why the world don't understand. They say, you, you go to church or you serve the Lord because uh, uh, you, you're weak. Oh, you use for a crutch. But, but uh, yeah, or, yeah, you need help, you need a crutch or whatever. Listen, following the Lord, you have to be strong. Amen, amen. It's a challenge. Challenge anything within you. Because yes. No, no. So it causes you to go after the flesh. Yeah. And the fleshly nature and the mindset. That's the only place you can go. <laughs> That's all. It, so it, this is talking about now the spirit. Yes. Which will now help you to overcome uh -huh. what he was talking about in chapter. In seven. chapter seven, right? So the the the, the key about this, folks is that when we read a verse like this, we ought to say, thank God every day. Right. Y'all see what I'm saying? Uh, because you, and, and to know when you got saved or you came into the Lord and, and, and you accepted uh, the terms of the Lord, so what happened is that he is the one who saves you <clears throat> and help you to be able to become what you're supposed to be. Amen? So it's very important for us to begin to see that uh, truly without the Lord, we, we can't do anything. Seemingly in the beginning, mm -hmm. to all this enjoyment and all this stuff, and it leads them right to destruction. Yes, because of that evil inclination. Yeah. The evil inclination hasn't stopped working. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Amen. Because a lot of times we take off 
uh, at, at our first thoughts, and we don't really roll it around and see uh, what kind of benefits we got when we think these thoughts. Amen? And, and, and we just lose, you know. Yeah, we never count the costs. Yes. So um, we got to come to a point <clears throat> where when we see uh, what the Lord is saying, uh, uh, when we see what the Lord is saying, that we are able <clears throat> to do something uh, that the Lord wants us to do when we can be victorious. Amen. This is very, very important. Now, uh, we want to be able to go a little further on this. And uh, would you read further, please? The Amplified New Testament gives this rendering. Yeah. So to the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears, up, bears us up in our weakness. Mm -hmm. He takes the burden on himself in our place mm -hmm. to share the load and make our part easier. Ah, uh, what does he do? Sh share, share the, the load, load and make, make our, our part, part easier. easier. Now, we just read uh, that uh, the Holy Spirit helps us in our suffering. Uh, and I did want to kind of lift a little bit up or more on the suffering because when there come a time as we uh, supposedly looking for, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, tribulation, and we, we think about tribulation, we think about revelation, we think about all the kinds of things like that where believers uh, really in other countries, do you know they are suffering terrible, they are dying? Uh, for following the Lord. And they, are, they have to go to places and have church underground mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. And here in America, where we have an opportunity to serve the Lord, of <coughs> course, I hate to say it, but our politicians are taking us away from God. But when they are ready to get a vote, they run to the church so yeah. they can uh, get all the votes that they can. But they, the people don't know in the church that politicians are not really trying to help them. They're trying to get as many votes as they can. So they'll go to the church and they'll go to the devil's hall. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, this is an appeal to everybody. And this is hasn't changed. The Romans went to the Jewish leaders to gain, to help them to gain control so they could stay in power. The only, you looking at Pilate, he wanted to keep everything calm or he was gonna lose his job. Well, yeah, well, Yeshua told him <laughs> like we talked about last night, uh, <laughs> Yeshua told him, said, you go tell that fox, talking about her, mm -hmm. that he's going to cast out devils and he's going to keep working and get people saved as long as he was living on earth. You know, I'm just paraphrasing. Y'all understand? Uh, so the kingdom of God, Herod had nothing for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is so powerful, there's nothing on earth that can outdo the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Nothing. And so we are, we are the kingdom of God. God. Amen. Oh, I, uh, right Amen. there. Amen. You ought to say hallelujah. 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 I, I'm, hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks. Thank you, Jesus. You don't realize there's nothing in this world like the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So, so we got to see that in our suffering, even if we were, as I mentioned before, uh, the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the hall of faith, if you read it, you, will, you would say, you mean to tell me they had to go through all of this? All this suffering and died? 
not seeing the Savior. Come on, somebody. Not even knowing when he came. <clears throat> we get a chance to see all of this and then to serve and, and to be with him. Come on now. And like I say in America, we don't have to go through some of that stuff that they had to go through. But I tell you right now, if we don't do what we can for others, we're going to be in trouble with God. Because Ezekiel said we got to blow the trumpet, which means that we got to keep on telling people when, when things are not right, when it's wrong, we ought to tell them so they can wake up. Amen? So this is very important. Let us go a little further, please, Danny. The Holy Spirit maketh intercession. Yes. The ministry of prayer is, 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 spirit, is spiritually, is spiritual ministry. Yes. And that is why we need to help of the, whole, the help of the Holy Spirit. He is able to express what we cannot put into words. Did y'all get that? The Holy Spirit, when we get to a point, how many have been to a point you didn't know what to pray, didn't know what to say, you didn't know who to go to, you didn't know which way to turn? That's, that's actually, actually, for me, that's more often because, because you don't even know sometimes what's going on with anybody. Yes, well, that's true. So you, you just need to ask God you know, to help. Yeah. So that yeah. I will know. And then something comes up. Yeah. A face pop up. Yeah. Different, you know, different things like that will happen. Yeah. And then you know. But you know that it's him because you've asked. You asked for the help. And there's nobody else gonna give it to you like that. Amen. Now, uh, as we were going through some of the ministry of Christ last night, um, we realize that the kind of thing that we are hearing from Paul here in Romans is uh, the time that Yeshua was supposed to come and the kingdom and all of the work of casting out evil spirits and things like that uh, where the Torah and the Old Testament uh, did not give us, but that was reserved for the Messiah. We learned that in the school. Y'all remember that? Now, <clears throat> the, the, the point about it, this, is that this is how we were supposed to understand who was the Messiah. Amen. Did they not say, uh, we've never seen it on this fashion before, and he just spoke to demons and they come out huh where the Pharisees Sadducees had to go through all the rituals and all that kind of stuff come on now all right but he spoke to them and they obeyed man that ought to help us a whole lot so that tells us if he'd given you the gift of speech then what should you do get out yes yes you need to speak to them to get them out and to get them out of your family or whatever, amen, and even out of your bones and organs. <laughs> Come on now. So, so this is, is something, folks, that we don't realize how much help we got. And we talked about the fact that you know, if we don't understand this, we are missing the power of the kingdom. And we are missing the Messiah and his teachings. And we also talked about the fact that he has never called anybody unless he gave them power to do the work. So look at the church today. Take a view. How many churches that you can go to if you had a demon, who can help you? Come on 
come now. But the ministry of Christ, we were supposed to be able to go to any place and get help. Now, all right, I ain't gonna say no more since y'all so quiet. I ain't, I ain't saying nothing else. Danny, please start reading, please. Because, uh, amen. All right, did you, did you get okay. where you left off there? Yes, I have it. All right. He knows the mind of God, and yes. whatsoever the Spirit prays through us will be in perfect harmony with the will of God. Uh -huh. and intercessory prayer reaches its greatest impact when it passes beyond the realm of our words and finds expression in the words of the Spirit and with groanings which cannot be uttered. All right, hold it right there. Now, when we run out of words, that's when the Holy Spirit can come in. All you got to do is say, help me, Holy Spirit. And some of us might just say, Lord, help. <laughs> Ain't no other Godhead here but Holy Spirit. Amen? So, yes. Yeah. I have heard, you know, a lot of people say that that left with the apostles. That's why you don't see a whole lot of that. That's what a lot of churches, some churches are saying that that has, that done, you don't need that. That has, yeah. 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 Well, well, now, <laughs> sis, let me say this. Have you read that in the scripture anywhere? No, I know that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, amen, amen. Yeah. What are they doing? Adding their commentary yes, to the same. Yes, yes, We don't want that. Yeah. We want the word. Yes. <clears throat> are you all hearing? Yeah. yeah. There are too many people trying to give us what God has already given us. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You mean what, to what, us something else other than what God has already given us? Yes, something but other than what yeah. God has given us. But that's true. But what I'm saying is that we don't need that kind of commentary. What we need is what he says. That's what we need. And we need to bathe in that every day. Because that's what's wrong with the church today. Uh, and, and, I, and I might say this because it is so important. We are trying to get to the point that we want to see in this branch of Zion uh, what happened to the power. We still working on it. And come to find out when there was another Pentecost called Azusa Street, what happened, now look, 2,000 years ago, there's Azusa Street which touched the known world of its day. And the world is much larger now. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing. What we are trying to get you to see is what put the fire out of Azusa Street was again uh, separation. When, when, when the assembly of God got started, that just, a certain people went that way. Then the Holy Spirit lifted up, lifted from it, you know. And, and lifted, yes, lifted well that's, that's what I'm trying to explain now, is that when we're supposed to be together, every nationality, every, listen, our government took us that way. And then the church followed the government. Instead, and when Azusa Street came, it put everybody in one basket. Y'all remember that fish net I told y'all about? Huh? I'm looking at yeah. some spots and crocus amen, now. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> and some of you butterfish, amen. 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 But all in the net. 
and all trying to get along in the net, <clears throat> rubbing one another, that we can do the work of God. And it's, it was supposed to come together that way. It was never supposed to be separated. And so what happened was that in Azusa Street, after about three and a half years, that's a strange thing. How, 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 how long was Jesus' ministry? Three and a half years. <laughs> Azusa Street. And, then, and, and let, me, let me say something else. Azusa... Uh, I think it was an Indian word. But let me, let me tell you this. You have to understand, if you spell Azusa, what is the last three letters? letters? Last, Come on. Last word. A, U -A. Z, A, U, S, A. Come on, come on. <clears throat> Listen. I was reading and I was reading and reading and the Lord said, look at that. U-S-A. <clears throat> Israel and U-S-A. Come on, somebody. And I said, Lord, it's our time. And then Seymour said that in a hundred years, a little over a hundred years from now, we'll have another outpouring. And we either can have that outpouring or Jonathan Kahn said we can lose the country. Either we're going one way or the other. We are at that particular point that God is not going to allow us to continue to be lukewarm and getting deeper and deeper into the things of the adversary. <clears throat> and it's our government that's putting us there. All you got to do is read the book. Now, if the church don't stand up and come back together, because in Azusa Street, God solved the USA's problem. And that was to bring all nationalities together, to worship together, and then to take the world. But because of the fact we have not obeyed God, somebody say, well, I think it would be best to have a uh, of this church and somebody said well it's best to have a black church but verse seldom they said that but they said that after the everybody else wanted their own church yeah yeah so you had we were forced to do your own thing so it wasn't that you made the decision thank God for that <laughs> Y'all see that? And we don't realize how much this kind of history in the Lord has, listen, we are to the point that we had Baal worship, killing babies, offering your children to, to Baal. Come on. We lost the spirit of God that was healing and delivering <clears throat> All you had to do is get to Azusa Street. I don't care what your problem was. Even if your limb was cut off, you got another limb. Man, man. Come on, who don't want that kind of power? Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> amen, amen. Are you all hearing? Amen. God is saying, if you go my way and you come together and you're one unit, I'll do anything for you. I'm trying to get y'all to see it because, listen, we're going to have something on Azusa Street. We're going to have something on Jonathan Kahn, and we are going to see exactly what Jonathan Kahn is saying. Now, either we can go at this particular point, these are the last days, we can go one way or we can go the other. We can lose the country 
or we can have heaven on earth. We are just at that point. And when God started showing me this, I said, oh, my God. Father, what can we do? And so I, I, I'm, 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 I tell you, I'm working right now trying to find out all I need to do to start putting out some messages in Petersburg. Are you, you all know how serious this is? I'm telling you, folks, we, we got we to gotta wake up. Glory be to God. Oh, my God. We, did we leave too far from our point? No, I don't know how no, we got no, there. No. Huh? Re, uh, read the last few lines, please. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. you, you know, uh, one of the most okay. one of the valuable. Mo okay. One of the most valuable ministries of the Spirit is that of helping us in prayer. Yes. The Spirit possessing all knowledge joins in intercession. Uh-huh. Since he knows <clears throat> the will of God, we have assurance that since the intercession is according to God's will, yes. we have the guarantee it will be answered. We have a what? Who don't want a guarantee? If you're spending your money, you want a guarantee. Whatever we do, we, we're looking for a guarantee. And the only way you can get a guarantee is to go to God. There ain't no guarantees anywhere else in the world. Oh, yeah, we got some good people would love to be able to stand and say, you know, uh, if you do business with me, we'll guarantee you this and we'll guarantee you that. But nobody can do it like God. And so this is a serious situation. We have no right to change anything. When they start changing in Azusa Street, God. Let the power what? Uplift. That's right. And there was no more limbs. The assembly of God went off, and then what is the church of God in Christ? That came out of that, and, and, and then they start having these denominations, and look at the mess we got today. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Thank you for that, amen, elder. I, 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 you know, I need somebody to talk to me. It is such a shame because today everybody could he be healed. We are suffering because we don't want to come together. And listen, I'm going to tell you folks, I remember medical college, and that's been there for a long time in the city of Richmond, one of the largest uh, outfits of medical science in dealing with, med, uh, you know, getting people uh, well as much as they can. But the percentage is not good because some people get well and some people die. But in God, nobody dies. Amen, 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 amen. Live for eternally, eternally. Nobody die in God. It's a guarantee. Didn't we just get through talking about guarantees? Everybody get healed. And you don't have to come out your pocket every time. You don't have to have insurance. You don't have insurance, you be a denied. And even with your insurance, sometimes that ain't working. And in the government right now, they're changing insurance any kind of way they want to. Come on, somebody. Aren't we tired of, of everything just going to pot? Why don't we really buckle down and go to God 
and let him handle it. Oh, my God, if we only understood, if we had the kingdom over here and see it operate for a few years and had the kingdom, uh, had the, the world like we see it now, and we look at the two differences, I don't care what anybody say, I know where I'm going. Nobody wants to make the comparison like they're supposed to, so they get to the point that they want to uh, get their language into the world any kind of way they want to because of the way they feel. Not because of the, the truth of it, anything, but the way they feel. I feel like I'm a, 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 a turtle. <laughs> the devil said, all right. Get on your belly. <laughs> Come on now. I don't want to do it. I want to be with the Lord. Come on. How many want to be with the Lord? Amen. 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 Because in the kingdom of God, folks, we got everything we need. All the spare parts is in heaven we don't need, I don't need to kill somebody to get a spare part. Oh, yeah. Anybody hear what I'm saying? If somebody need a new heart, I know a man, or know of him rather, filthy rich, bank financier, have had seven or eight hearts. Now, somebody had to die. Mm. Mm. Oh, y'all ain't there. Y'all so quiet. Oh, is that right? Amen. Sometimes they still die. Like they might, you know, oh, yeah. someone can donate a oh, kidney. Oh, yeah, all of it is change uh, work. Yeah, and they it may work for a while, and then next thing you know, they done, they done died. Then, yeah, it yeah. rejected their body, and then yeah. they died. They're like, what happened? They just got a new heart, a yeah. new kidney, yeah. and it, it rejected the body, and they, yeah, they still die a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me, you said something about heart and kidney. There ain't but one heart in your body. Right. And you ain't got but two kidneys, so if, if you can't give both of them. Right. Huh? You can only donate one. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody got to die. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> my mother suffered from heart failure. Okay. And um, she was on, she was on the, what you call the list, uh -huh. to receive a heart. And I used to wonder why she didn't, because she decided when it came up, when it came time for her to receive the heart, yeah. she rejected it. Okay. And we you thought wonder. that um, she should have at the time received yeah. the heart, but I understand better now why she, re she rejected it. You know, she decided that if she's gonna, you know, she's gonna live with the heart that she has, what God created for her, if God didn't heal it, yeah. then it was time for her to go. And so she rejected the heart. And I give God the glory for her wisdom <laughs> in God, yeah. you know, to <clears throat> reject that heart that she didn't even, you know, she didn't know who it was. She didn't know yeah. it was going to work. Yeah. And she decided to keep her own heart. Yeah. And she did live six years past the oh, time no, that she was supposed to live at the time when the, you know, when the medication wasn't there. Yes. And the doctor, when at her funeral, the doctor sent a note. In fact, yeah, we read a note. He said, uh, after diagnose, being diagnosed with heart failure, yeah. two years is your limit. And wow. she lived six years. Wow. And she gave that, we read, that was read during her wow. home going. So I give God the glory for her wisdom yes, in that. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes. Can you just say, Back uh, there, please. Yeah. Here, friend. Mm -hmm. um, some people in um, the Seventh Day Adventure Church, they don't give blood. No. So a lot of them, you know, they pass away Je if they Jehovah need Witness blood. Jehovah's Witness or Seventh Day? Jehovah's Witness. 
a Jehovah Witness. Uh huh. Oh, Jehovah yeah. Witness. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think I, I, but I knew a man that when work with me, his wife, they went to the Seven Day of Mentor, and, and, and yeah. she didn't could get. Be. Yeah, she yeah, didn't get. Could blood. Be, yeah, could be. Could be. It's in their doctrine. Yeah, but this is very true. Uh huh. We were having a conversation last night, similar to what we're talking about today. Yeah. And the family wanted to know if, in the event something happened to me, would I want to be resuscitated? And I've said that for years, no. Uh -huh. I guess they thought I'd changed my mind. No. Uh -huh. If it's my time, God calling me home, let me go. Uh -huh. I don't want nobody pulling me up off the floor with them paddles or either crushing my chest. And then they bring me back and I got more trouble than I had before I left here. <laughs> oh no, let me go. It's my time. <laughs> it's my time, uh, let me I go. And if you. not, God, he has the last word. Yeah. I don't have to have them all on me like that. If he yeah. wants me to stay, yeah. then he's going to heal whatever happened. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, we I, used to sing a song, It Is Well With My Soul. With my soul. All those old songs, all those, they used to have the messages to it. Yeah, you can say that the music came, the, the notes came from the bar room. You, you, can, you can say all of that, but, but people use what they had, but it, it wasn't any particular person, um, you know, that had such fame, you know, and they were spreading something, you know. So the, the, the key to this thing, folks, is that whatever we have, whatever you've acquired, give it to the Lord. Come on, give it that, to the that's Lord. The, that's the and only make way. Sure. That's the only way it can be purified, anyway. Yeah. Because anything that comes from <clears throat> us, you know, He has to deal with it. Yes. You know, because we're doing yes. the best we can. But I was thinking about um, when we're talking about the the organ donation. Yeah. You know, movies, old movies tell you Frankenstein. Mm. Frankenstein was taking parts. That that was the movie. And, you know, it was the movie, and you know, they were doing this and they were doing that, and he yeah. brought something back to life. Yeah. But, but it tells you even way back then that mm -hmm. that was something going on within yeah. medical science that they were looking at even way oh, back yes. then. So. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, praise God. When my wife spoke up just then, I got flashbacks to when my mother was and we moved here uh -huh. and was living with us. Yeah. And it, when she had suffered a stroke and they wanted to, okay, look, she's not gonna live a good quality of life, let us pull the plug. Yeah. And bless God, my wife says, no, that's not your decision. Yes. And I thought about it, and the more I, I backed up and I thought about it, the so-called government-sponsored healthcare we get Yep. covers you for a limited amount of days in a hospital. Uh -huh. And they give the hospital a certain amount of money for that bed you're laying in. Oh. After that, they cut the cost. Yes. So now they're looking at not trying to look, give my mother a better quality of life or let her go peacefully. Yeah. They're looking to save money and make money. Yeah. And I thought even further back, praise God, when I was in the hospital, I was in for 11 months straight as, a, as, a, as an infant. And yeah. given the time in our history, I probably would not have been here if not for the divine intervention. Oh, my God. So I thought to myself, and I looked <clears throat> at the doctor in the face, I said, my mother and my father would not give up on me. Yeah. I will not give up on them. All right. I will not give up on them. Amen. And so when it was time to go, yeah. and as praise God, we had the service here, and I said something that's came back and my mother was a very sharp-minded individual yeah. and didn't take anything from anybody. Uh -huh. And the doctor says, look like she's ready to go. And my mom probably woke up from that coma and said, I'll go when I'm ready. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I, that, that, that was my mother, that, uh -huh. praise God. And so that strength, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And, and she said, I'll go when I'm ready. Yeah. I'll Amen. go when I'm ready and when, when she gets called, time to go. Thank you all, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, this is this is wonderful. Oh yes, yes. She have a uh, 
a testimony. Amen. You know, and that's another thing, folks. Don't fail to give him glory. Okay. How dare you talk about putting out testimonies? What's wrong with us? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Okay. I just want to say four years ago, the doctors tried to talk my sister uh -huh. into getting, um, um, what do you call it? Ooh, dialysis. Yeah. They wanted her to have dialysis. Uh-huh. And he told her, he said, all we need to do is just put it in your arm just in case you need it. Oh. And she said, no. She <clears throat> said, no. So we started, and Elder Burt and all of us in the prayer group would uh -huh. lift her name up. Uh -huh. So um, in May of 2015, uh -huh. they stopped giving her the shot. They said, we're not going to give you the shot anymore because it's too expensive. So I got up that morning, and I and Brandy went down to take her to another doctor who would give her the shot. And on my, when I got up that morning, the Lord told me, he said, there is going to be a supernatural turnaround in her life. Glory. And for three years, I'm like, Lord, you said it's going to be a supernatural turnaround. Uh -huh. Things got worse before they got better. <clears throat> wow. But I want to say, as of last week and this week, uh -huh. she went to her primary physician last week, and she said, all of your results are so good. Yeah. I'm not even going to talk about dialysis. So she went to this doctor, this doctor on Thursday, who is the kidney doctor, uh -huh. who has been saying to her, every time she go, you need to go on dialysis, you need to go, but guess what his report was this time? She said, Alice, I want to tell you exactly what he told me. And so she stopped. She said, he told me, I know you must be a miracle to a lot of people. And I'm like, a miracle to him, because he was the one, too, that was trying to force her. But she told me, she said, Alice, the Lord told me to live. She said, and the Lord told me that you are covered with my blood. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I told her, I said, every time they come to you with <clears throat> this stuff, you say in your heart. Yeah. I said, you don't have to scream it out. Yeah. I said, but you can say in your heart, Lord, yeah. you told me that I'm covered with your blood. Lord, yeah. you told me to live. Yes. Yeah. So even though things may come against you, yes. Yeah. And you are standing on God's word. Yes. They may get worse. Yes. Before they get better, but uh, you just continue yes. to stand on God's word, and God is true to His word. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Did y'all get that? Listen, folks. Don't fail to give God glory. We need to be doing that more than anything. This is what the adversary hates. He wants to receive something. But no, we give it to the one who deserve it. Amen? Amen. And so the, the, the thing that uh, this 26th verse of Romans is really giving us is our help cometh from the Lord. And it is spiritual help. And what I like about it, when you run out of words, he comes and gives you what you need or he goes to the Father for you and tell what you had on your heart. And you can't say it better than he can. 
because words don't get in that realm like spirit. Now, I don't know whether y'all are hearing this or not, but you've got to hear it today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. He knows the mind of you. He knows everything. And he puts it all together, to, and it is God's will. So you can't miss it. Thank you, Lord. Because if everything he does generates life. Y'all didn't hear that. What did I say? Everything in here generates life. It generates life. There's no death in him. Amen. No death in him. It doesn't exist. Yeah, we're going to get off of this verse after a while. Amen. We're going to get, off, get away from this verse. Uh, and 27 is joined to 26, and we haven't got to 27 yet. But, but, but we're going to get there. Amen. Did y'all get anything? Amen. God bless you.